lowest, lowest bar possible. So much that the seven dwarves could play limbo under it is that we shouldn't honor them and give them standing ovations in the House of Commons. Ezra Levant was uh, one of the first people, if not the first person, to notice this. He is the rebel commander at Rebel News and joins me now. Ezra, it's always good to talk to you. I mean, you're, you're a Jewish man yourself, and I, I know you have a very high tolerance for free speech and, and for people having controversial and even hateful opinions, but, but just on a personal level, how did you feel when you saw this and, and clued in to what people in the House of Commons didn't really clue into? Yeah, I, I mean, talk about tricky language. I mean, the guy was a Nazi. I, I'm not saying he was like a regular GI, just a conscript in the army. He was a volunteer with Hitler's SS. That was the political hunter killers. Those are the folks who would go after the partisan resistance. Those are the folks who would hunt for Jews in the attics. These were the vicious Hitler errand boys. Um, they trained near Dachau. They um, they were the, the 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 division for the battalion that would shoot Jews and bury them in mass graves. So he wasn't just fighting; he was a Nazi, an SS officer. I, I'm curious if he has the the telltale SS tattoo under their armpit. They would have an SS tattoo and then their blood type. Now I wonder if Yaroslav Hunka has that. It would be terrifying to find out. This guy sort of sneaked into Canada, according to. Um, David Pugliese, Canada's leading military journalist and historian, a lot of these guys sneaked into Canada by changing the name of the battalion. They said instead of part of the 14th Waffen SS, they were with the 1st Ukrainian Battalion. And about 2,000 of these folks managed to sneak into Canada. This guy, Yaroslav Hunka, kept a low profile for a long time. I mean, he's 98. Uh, maybe he was worried that some Mossad Nazi hunter would, would show up one day and get him. But he, he's 98. And imagine getting the phone call. You're a Nazi. You've been living low key. You sort of lied to get into Canada. And then one day you get a phone call from the government, not to prosecute you, but to champion you as this hero. Anthony Rhoda literally called him a hero. Now I got a question for you. Do you think for one second that being a guest of honor for the entire parliament when the foreign president of Ukraine is there. So you've got high security. Everyone's been going through the metal detector because this guy, Zelensky, is under an assassination risk. Do you think for one second that Yaroslav Hunka was not scrutinized by not just one, but probably 10 people? Do you really think Trudeau, the master thespian, didn't know who was who? And do you think Christia Freeland, whose own grandfather was a Ukrainian Nazi who actually expropriated a newspaper from a Jew and turned it into a Nazi propaganda machine. Do you think for a second that Christia Freeland didn't know exactly what was going on? And you were so right, Andrew. These liberals call everyone a Nazi. It's projection. They are the Nazi lovers. And it wasn't until the Internet, including myself, connected the dots no regime media bothered to say oh who's that guy fighting against russia oh that's our friend why did it take independent journalists like myself when not a single regime journalist said hmm that's a bit weird who would have fought against russia in the early 40s well on that note i mean the most charitable interpretation for this is that they are idiots it is that you have people that don't understand the history or lack the logic and reason to just put it. two and two together you don't buy that it sounds like you know jaspal atwal and you guys broke this story he was the uh terrorist the judge called him a terrorist who was convicted of attempted murder when an indian cabinet minister was visiting bc jaspal atwal tried to kill him he was convicted declared a terrorist Justin Trudeau invited him to go to India with him. Oh, I didn't know. You didn't know? Or you were playing domestic politics. Just like Trudeau plays domestic politics with the Sikh community, he plays domestic politics with the large Ukrainian-Canadian community. And by the way, my family's originally from Ukraine as well, from the city of Dnipro. So I'm, I'm not hostile to Ukraine. I just think that you got 2,000 Nazis who came from Ukraine to Canada. Most of them have passed away. You find the one guy who's 98, he's probably one of the I'd be surprised if there's five others in the whole country. You found the one Nazi, not a fake Nazi, not a rhetorical Nazi, not a neo-Nazi, but a real Nazi 
who's probably got the SS tattoo under the armpit, who probably, if he was active for so many years, probably murdered a few Jews and a few resistance fighters. He probably did, Andrew. I mean, I don't yeah, know. Just, He's just, never just, been just charged. To call it out, you don't have any evidence specifically no, I on don't. this man. I, I absolutely don't. And he will go to his grave unprosecuted. And he's lived a charmed life, Andrew. He's 98, the last 73 years or 72 years in this country. Imagine what a bizarre ending to his life. He's invited to Ottawa. The whole parliament jumps to their feet and applauds him. And they call him a hero. And he's thinking, I'm vindicated. I'm redeemed. Adolf Hitler must be thrilled with them. And then it all comes undone. What a bizarre, bizarre life. I've seen, I mean, there was, I can't remember the name of it now. There was a, a, a mini series on Netflix about uh, I, I John Demanovich was, uh, or Demanovich, I, I recall Demanovich. the, name, the one that they thought yeah. was, you know, Ivan the Terrible. And, and, you know, you watch this and you just see this horrible, horrible man, but to his family, he's grandpa. He's the guy that yeah. they've known that has probably yeah. never committed any criminal wrong for the last 70, oh, yeah. 80 years of his life. And here yeah. we have a guy who's probably in a very similar boat. He's known as a loving family guy, community guy. If he had just kept his head down for two years, he, he goes to his grave with nothing. Now this is his legacy. And I, I mean, I, I don't think that there was any 3D chess being played here to try no. to destroy this uh, family's life. But my goodness, that's the consequence of this, because now no one will rest until they understand this. People that had never heard of this division are now asking questions about, whoa, why did Canada just open up its doors to people that had done this? Let me throw a few quick things at you before I go. Number one, three months ago, Justin Trudeau went to Kiev and met with uh, uh, Martin um, Mel, sorry, Andre, Andre Melnik, excuse me, Andre Melnik. He was Ukraine's ambassador to Germany, and he was fired by Zelensky for denying the Holocaust. Fired by Zelensky. Trudeau met with him. Point two, Christia Freeland posed, and you guys broke this story too, with the scarf that was for Stepan Bandera, the, the Ukrainian Nazi. How many, uh, and by the way, um, if you look at David Pugliese's story in The Ottawa Citizen, uh, Christia Freeland's and, and the government have met with the Nazi Azov Battalion and uh, instructed the Canadian Armed Forces to keep a low media profile. So that's not one dalliance with Nazis. That's two, three, four. How many times does Justin Trudeau and Christia Freeland get to hang out with Nazis and say, whoopsies, didn't mean to? And well, remember... Christian Freeland's own grandfather was a Nazi, and she helped cover that up for years. Well, and on the note of Freeland, too, I, I mean, if we go back to the ignorance argument, the ignorance plea here, Christian Freeland, if there is one person in the House of Commons that has no right to plead ignorant, it is Christian Freeland, because she knows this history intricately it is part of her family history she's got a uh, i think it's like a condo or a house in you know downtown mm -hmm. kiev she knows ukraine well it's like most people like for example if someone had handed me the bandera flag i wouldn't have known what it was christian freeland did and and that's the thing is that if there's one person in that government that doesn't get to just hide behind that it's her yeah you know what i it's amazing how the, the regime media are rushing to give Trudeau and, and Freeland the benefit of the doubt when you have a real live SS officer in parliament. But you call it, but, uh, but they demonize every conservative, every trucker, everyone who's worried about gender ideology in school. They call them Nazis. Never again, Andrew, can we accept the, uh, the accusation of bigotry or Nazism from the liberals. They are the only government in the world that I know of that has brought Nazis into parliament and cheered them. And Trudeau should never be allowed to forget that for the rest of his days. He, you know what? Pierre Trudeau motorcycled around Montreal with a Nazi helmet in the 40s. It was a big joke. Well, 80 years later, his son brought a Nazi into parliament. Justin Trudeau is a disgrace. We should never let him forget that. Yeah, and it makes it look quaint when a few years ago the Liberals forgot to mention Jews on the plaque of their Holocaust memorial. I don't know if you remember that. And, you know, they were that was, I again, see. another whoopsie. Uh, well, uh, Ezra, I know you have to go. I appreciate you coming on. Your coverage on this uh, started on Twitter, and I know we'll uh, carry on into your show tonight at Rebel News. So thank you very much. Thanks, my friend. Bye-bye. All right, that was Ezra Levant, the Rebel commander of Rebel News. And